Hello, I'm Belkis Perez. Thanks for tuning into Coral Gables Now. Today on the show, we'll take you on a tour of the new high school that just opened up in the city. You pay for property insurance for your house, but what does that really cover and is it enough? We've got a local expert here to show us how to get the most out of your insurance policy. We'll also talk to a best-selling author who uses scenes from Coral Gables in his book and will help you break up the workday with some jazz. Those stories and much more here on Coral Gables Now. Welcome to Coral Gables Now, I'm Belkis Perez. Like the rest of Florida, here in Coral Gables we pay a high price for living in paradise, especially when it comes to property insurance. Aside from facing risks of a property damage from fires, lightnings, hail, flooding, we here have to contend with hurricanes and sinkholes as well. Recently amendments were made to the Florida's uh, insurance laws regarding sinkholes, so we thought this was a very good time as any to review your insurance policies and make sure that you get the most out of your coverage should you need it. So joining us today is Dan Odess, president of East Coast Public Adjusters located right here in Coral Gables. Thank you so much Dan for being here with us. Thank you for having me. So tell me about your business um, right here in Coral Gables for a really long time too. Yes we have. My late Pacatania otherwise known as Legend, um, has, has started the company in 1988. Okay. Uh, we've grown the company to two offices. Uh, we're looking uh, forward to the future, and uh, we've been here helping insurers locally uh, and throughout the country. Where do you have the second office? Uh, second office is in Houston, Texas. Wow, okay. And, uh, and I was on your website, and it says that you're one of the oldest ones in South Florida, right? Southeast Florida. Oldest and largest. Wow. Um, so what exactly uh, do you do there? What we do is we represent the interests of the insured. We want to protect the rights of an insured when they have a loss. We want to make sure that they get their, themselves back into their home or their businesses as quickly and with the maximum amount of recovery to make sure that they're not going out of pocket for those damages. That's why you buy insurance. Yeah, exactly. Now, if, if I were to go, uh, is, there, is there a study or something that tells me that you're more likely to get more out of your insurance company should you have a claim? if you go through an adjuster than if you go directly through your insurance company? In fact, there is. The uh, state of Florida did research, it's called the OPAGA report, mm -hmm. more formally known. And what they showed was that with the representation of a public adjuster, you'll receive between 574 to 747% increase in your claim settlement than if you did it yourself. That's amazing. And I think a lot of it has to do that you guys deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. We just, you know, read our policy when when we have an issue, yeah, absolutely. and so and so that's I think, uh, you know, that you guys are more in tune with what's going on. Right. We study <coughs> these things. We deal with them on a day-to-day -day basis. We are an expert in insurance. It's just like when you go to your auto mechanic, or if you go to an accountant for your taxes, or an attorney when you have a legal matter, or a doctor when you get sick. We're that public adjuster. What we do is we handle and work with you to help you with your insurance losses, whether it's for your business or for your home. We're there, we know what needs to be done, we need to know what needs to be done immediately, mm -hmm. and we know what they require as, as you go along here, um, and you work with your insurance company to get that um, recovery. So sinkholes, let's talk about that for a second. Um, there was something new that uh, just went through the legislature, and um, so now there's there's a review of policies. I've heard some people saying that it's they're upset about the new rules, but um, how does it affect homeowners here in Coral Gables specifically? Most of what you're hearing and a lot of frustration is really the access to the coverage more than your way in which you would recover. So when, when people are discussing with their frustrations, they're not really so much concerned about how they're going to recover as much as whether or not they're going to have coverage for it. Mm. So if you do have coverage for it, though, there are some very specific things that you need to do and some financial obligations and timing obligations that you have to your insurance company. So be sure that if you do have a loss, mm -hmm. that you consult with someone to review your specific policy, whether it's your business or your home, and make sure that you're doing what you need to do in order to recover. 
simple thing could be just to call us up and you know we can give you some simple advice after reviewing your policy or ask an attorney um, or your agent or your broker should be able to provide you that answer. Now there's different coverages um, that uh, you know the, the policy has. Um, a lot of uh, Coral Gables residents have double, uh, have uh, second properties, uh, an investment property. Um, should you have the same coverage for those properties as your, your primary to your secondary? Well, at the end of the day, it really has to do with financial means. If you can afford it, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The more coverage you can afford yourself, it's, you know, rather than rolling the dice and really uh, struggling to recover and put that property back on the market, if it, let's say it was your That's rental true. property, um, you have your insurance there to, um, to pad you so that you can get the recovery if, in fact, you recover appropriately. Um, on your home, you're going to have, you know, your typical HO3 policies or special form or sometimes refer to all risk. Uh, what that is, is it's basically covering you for everything that's mm -hmm. not specifically excluded in the policy. Mm -hmm. On your rental properties, a lot of times you'll have your dwelling policies, which are very um, uh, loss specific. Like it will specifically say it'll only cover for fire or lightning. Okay. Usually about 13 or so different types of coverages um, that those will specifically cover you for. Mm -hmm. Unlike your all risk special form uh, policy, which will cover you for everything except for what's excluded. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I for one, when, you know, I've, I told you beforehand, I got my policy several weeks ago and I've had it sitting in my kitchen counter just, you know, I want to read it at one point and I'm just like, you know what, I'm not going to read it. I'll just put it away. Hopefully it's, everything is there. So I think there's a lot of people like me, hopefully. I don't want to, you know, but, you know, I think that it's really difficult sometimes to just sort through all those papers and just know if, if, if everything is correct. So is there anything that I should look for, you know, instead of reading the entire document, is there anything that you would tell me, uh, you know, m pay close attention to these certain aspects? The interesting thing about insurance is that it's supposed to be written in a way that anyone can understand it. But most often, if it's, the, it's dry, it's mm -hmm. cumbersome, and it's got a lot of very specific details um, included in it. So it, it, it's, and, and it refers back to sections and, and goes back and forth. And so it's not very easy to refer, uh, to read or refer to. Uh, what I suggest is make sure that you at least take a look at your declaration page. Mm -hmm. Your declaration page is the page that's <coughs> on the front of your insurance policy. It's going to list off your different types of coverages. So let's say for a home, it's going to say coverage A, coverage B, coverage C, coverage D. You usually have a hurricane statement on it if you have wind or not. It'll state your deductible specifically either in a percentage form or in an actual dollar amount, depending on type, if it's the all perils deductible, which is you know your water pipe break or your fire. And then you have your wind deductible. And on there we'll have some bold language and that's required by the state of Florida. That's your most important document in your policy. All the other stuff you can obtain a copy from your, let's say your broker, your agent. That declaration page will have the claims number on there, the 800 number that you got to call when you have experience of loss, mm -hmm. all that important information right there. The rest of the policy is very interesting because it has addendums, exclusions, inclusions, exclusions, yes. all of that information that's more for the trained eye, such okay. as your public adjuster or your attorney. Okay. So I think definitely get a copy of that declaration page and get a copy of your whole policy mm -hmm. though. Stick it in a plastic, you know, Ziploc bag and store it somewhere safe. And also one of the best things that we always give advice on is scan it in and store it somewhere electronically. That's true. That's true. With the availability of space such as on Google or some of these other electronic companies where they give you free storage, upload it. You can even put it on Facebook. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So that's my best advice. I, what about, what about um, you know, when, when, when you've got something like, for example, uh, theft or fire, like how do you know how much coverage to get in, in that certain circumstance. It's interesting. Well, what you'll see in the, on that declaration page is your full amount of your coverage A, which is for your dwelling, mm -hmm. which is for the actual property itself, the sticks and bricks, let's say. Okay. Um, but inside your policy, when it comes to a, like a theft claim, it gets a little complicated because certain types of coverages for like money is limited to, you know, maybe $2,000 or $1,000 or $1,500. Depends on what that is. But does, is that something that we choose? Is that something that, that I chose? I mean, I, I'm talking like if I should know this, but I mean, is that, something, is that a number that I chose or is something that's standard for the industry? 
Well, I'd like to say it always is something that you could choose. Uh -huh. um, and there are ways that you can choose that by buying riders or addendums to your you know, actual contract. But most of that is standard. Okay. Most policies are approved by the state of Florida. Um, and most are written by a government entity, ISO. Uh, so this entity, ISO, publishes these policies, which are then approved by the state of Florida, which are then used by admitted carriers, such as your state farm, your all state, your citizens. So they are standard, but then again, you never can be sure what you're, what you're getting. So make sure that you get a copy of it, mm -hmm. you review that, you at least have your declaration page. In the event that you have a loss, if you don't understand completely what you're entitled to your coverage is, contact either a public adjuster, your broker, your agent, and, and find out that make sure that you're getting every coverage that you're afforded to because you are paying for this. And then when you're talking to someone like an adjuster or if you're calling your, your, your insurance company, there's certain lingo that we, we talk, we say that is not the appropriate one, you're saying, and that's where the adjuster comes in uh, to, to make a difference. Uh, for example, we're talking about leaks and, and you shouldn't really use that language. So tell me a little bit about that. Correct. Yeah, one of the, uh, you know, there's a lot of words that we can use to describe the type of loss that we have there. And most often people really, they're using the, uh, uh, the verb rather than the adjective and those types of things where w under your policy, you're covered for water damage. Mm -hmm. And that's an actual covered loss. It actually specifically will say in your policy the word water. And then it has a lot of provisions below it, but it never mentions the word leak. Okay. However, when you have a loss, most often, or a homeowner has a loss, they'll report the loss as a water leak. Well, that can be you know, understood as something long-term, something ongoing. And under citizens' insurance policies, there are exclusions for water losses that go on for more than 14 days. Mm -hmm. So you want, to be make, you want to make sure that you're reporting the loss adequ adequately in order to get that, poli that, that policy coverages that you're paying for. Okay. Thank you so much, Dan. Really good information. Um, and, and we hope to bring you on the show uh, later on. Really good information on what we should do. And we should also document a lot of, a lot of the uh, items that we have already. And you know, if we've got uh, any property loss, for example, our washers, our dryers, our TVs, all of that, we should document it in receipts as well. Your best, your best assurance for insurance yeah. is to make sure that you go around, take photographs, scan, and, and, <coughs> and store electronically or in multiple places your important documents. But make sure when you're taking those photographs that you're also taking the contents and you're also taking the exterior and interior. These aren't photographs that you're going to print out and, and put them in a pretty frame. These are document show photographs to, sh yeah, to show the home as it was prior to the loss. So very important to store your do documents and your photographs electronically off-site. Okay. So There's that no reason not to do that now, I mean, with this no. technology that we have. No, absolutely. <laughs> All right, thank you, Dan. East Coast Public Adjusters are located at 224 Palermo Avenue, and they've got a lot of information on their website, including tips on what you must do before a storm hits to make sure you get the most from a claim. Their website is eastcoastadjusters.com. And still to come on Coral Gables Now, we take you on a tour of the newest high school in Coral Gables, and later, we'll sit you down with a best-selling author and learn why many of his books are set in the city. We'll be right back.